It is another episode of Amjambo Time. Thank you for all who help us to broadcast this unique program. I want to welcome our listeners in Maine and around the world. Here are our headline stories. Social justice activism is a concept that is not new to many. But who would imagine that an immigrant, black, Muslim, woman, would have the courage to become an outspoken activist in Maine? So I've always been an activist. I grew up in one of the largest refugee camps in the world. We have Hamdia Ahmed on this show. Known for her advocacy on topics like housing, Hamdia Ahmed is here with us on this show. How did she end up in activism? How did she manage to help dozens of asylum seekers to find houses in Maine last winter? Tune in as she talks about her work with your host, Jaha Kuzima. Welcome to this show, sponsored by the Maine Humanities Council. This program is sponsored by Maine Humanities Council, a statewide nonprofit that uses books, poetry, and big ideas to bring people together to discuss issues of importance. Maine Humanities Council offers facilitated discussion projects, speaker events, grant funding, and more. Maine Humanities Council would love to work with you to bring programming into your organization and your community. Please visit mainhumanities.org to learn more. Well, thank you for raising the voice about something that matters to you and all of us as a community. So I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and what you do in normal life. My name is Hamdi Ahmed. I am a social justice activist, leader, and an organizer here in Maine. Mm. Thank you so much, Hamdia. Just as we dive into, can you tell us what looks like the life or the schedule of a social activist, social justice activist like you? It really depends. Um, you know, some days there is less work. Some days there's a lot of work. So it just depends. But every day I am doing something to make a difference in this community. To make a difference. Yes. Uh, let's go specifically on the subjects that matter to you where you feel like my coding is in this doing this and this can you just take us more into subjects or your topics of interest in the community in Maine? my subjects of interest is helping immigrants refugees and asylum seekers i am somewhat of a resource for a lot of people um i use my platform to do what i can to find resources for other people um for example sometimes a family who's seeking asylum might be sleeping outside and they need help finding shelter and i would reach out to people that i know to help look for housing and then which including like for example landlords if they have availabilities then we try to help them get situated um other days can look like helping feed young men who are out in the streets because they don't have housing yet mm. one some days it can look like helping a mother who might have a child that is incarcerated through the criminal justice youth st- system mm. whether it's me reading them papers or mm. making calls for them to translate so mm. just everything that i do it's very different but it's all about help making sure that people are getting the help that they need yeah how did you find yourself into this because as i understand that's a bigger calling and uh, it's something that you really put in your heart you have in your heart so how did you end up yourself into this so i've always been an activist i grew up in one of the largest refugee camps in the world. And when I came to the United States, um, I, I was born a natural leader. Just I've seen my mom um, and her leadership skills, my dad. So I was born into like a family who are leaders. And it's just something that I guess I was born with. <laughs> that. Throughout the years, you know, I've always been passionate about fighting for equality and justice. Mm. So it's something that I'm very passionate about, making sure that people don't feel alone, making sure that people um, have the resource that they need, making sure that, you know, there's so many resources out here, but people 
don't some people don't speak the language they don't know where to start and i'm just like just trying to like help them navigate the system of america mm. and again you mentioned that you were born in a refugee camp i assume that's dada right yeah i w- i grew up in the refugee camp yes so uh, mm-hmm. and uh, most of immigrants they've got uh, to be in similar situations either in a refugee camp or in another challenging circumstances before they find themselves on this shore uh how do you connect both the challenging moments the challenging experience that someone has lived in and what he can do to help the community when he's getting a platform and opportunities like you mentioned well one of the reasons why i do this work is because i know what it feels like to not know how the system works to not know how to get help to not know how to get resources my family got support and that's the only reason why we were able to you know um get get the resources that we need through the system um so I just want to be like I just want to help others who are new to the country who don't know where to start who feel lost. I don't want them to feel alone. Mm. Yeah, that's that's really important. And uh you are also a woman. So how <laughs> as a woman, uh, as an immigrant, uh do they conflict? Do they challenge one another? How do you put the pieces together? Well, my mom always taught me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. So, me being a woman, it's not really challenging um to do this work. I mean, I am a, a Muslim black woman and an immigrant and it can be hard like dealing with you know people that are against the work that I do cuz they think um immigrants, asylum seekers and refugees are just here to get free handouts and that's not true like these are individuals and families who have risked so much have been through so much to just make it to america so they can have a better life for themselves and their families mm. you know no one just wants to become a refugee no one wants to become an asylum seeker it's not something that's fun but it's just how things you know like there were wars and persecution and conflicts in their country and they had to escape mm. yeah i'm trying to focus this story on how it looks like the life of a social justice activist and, and as you mentioned a woman an immigrant a black th- those are also some stereotypes that make someone vulnerable in the society that we live in so i'm wondering how you keep moving on how you keep being bold how you keep the courage uh so that you can continue your coding well when i was younger i had um let's say like when i was maybe 17 16 18 i had a hard time to try to navigate into the social justice activism world just because like i was young and uh, i was just getting so much hate towards me by people who are opposed to the work that i do but as i become older i realized that what those people say don't matter because my only focus and my only main goal is to really make a difference and as long as i'm doing that then there's people who have my back and i have a system of community support mm. so i try to not pay attention to the negative parts because if i pay attention to negativity then there's really no purpose of me doing this work yeah we are free Have you listened to our last episode of Amjamba Time yet? You will find great stories about renewing East Africa Conference, a visit to the Center for Grieving Children in Poland, the Cambodian New Year Festival in Westbrook, or on the Amjamba Africa YouTube channel. Subscribe and check them out. Activism includes bullying and more threats. How does Hamdia move forward despite that? Can we talk about that negative side as an experience that you can share with me and our listeners obviously? Uh what are the negative sides of this job or this mission that you took? Um I would say like I used to like get threats. Um people used to come after me when I organized um rallies to support immigrants. um 
you know, social media, bullying and harassment, lies, mm -hmm. <laughs> false, mm -hmm. false accusations, all that stuff, you know, by people that have never even done the work that I have done, but I'm not the first one to experience those kind of negativity. And I will not be the last one. From MLK to Malcolm X, they all have been through harassment, bullying, and more. So much more for doing, for being on the right side of justice, for being on the right side of history. So my, um, I'm no different, you know, I'm just, anyone who puts themselves out there, they're going to experience bullying, harassment by those who oppose their work. So I'm no different than what other leaders have been through or are going through. It's just a bit harder for me because I am Black and Muslim and an immigrant. But I'm not going to, you know, use that as an excuse to stop doing this work just because people are being negative towards me or harassing me or bullying me. That's not my focus. I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Malcolm X. Does he inspire you in any way? Of course. Malcolm X, MLK, um, they all inspire me so much. They have, they went through a lot to just fight for justice and equality. So I'm not even ten, like 5% of the leader that they mm. were, you know? Like, mm. I, I wish I could be like them, but they they are people that literally inspired millions of others and i'm one of them and yeah they are yeah. superstars in the game right superstars risk so much so who am i to like complain just because someone is bullying me or harassing me when they yeah. have when i when i see leaders that literally were killed for being on the right side of history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i wonder when you well, we'll be back on the side of the achievements. Uh, when you think about the booties, um, is it that you are being hard right now, or is it what is the reasoning behind? Is this sentiment to not change anything, entitlement? What is behind the booting that you receive? You, if you try to make sense of it, yeah. In the last years, like I would say, not so much now because um, mm -hmm. nobody pays attention to people like that anymore. <laughs> Like when the BLM movement was becoming big, you know, if you organized, if you did anything, there were people after you. Like, I remember like this guy wrote a whole article about me. He's he, it's just a blog that he does to bully people. He bullied my friends, me, you know, um, we were raising funds to help asylum seekers um, and other people in the community who are low income. We raised like 20 something thousand dollars. And he was like, Oh my God, they probably stole that money. And Hamdi is the leader. And they she probably took that money too. And everybody was like, huh? These people are out here every day making sure that people are fed clothes, you know, have uh shoes and jackets. Like uh, what what are you talking about? You know? Mm. So it's people like that that just are um social media, what is it like just sitting behind computers all day? Like bullying people, harassing them. That's what they make a living out of. Mm. And by the way, this guy has like 11 federal charges right now. Because mm. he's bullied so many people. He spreads lies. That's all he does. But he's not a real journalist. He is just a blogger. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, he's known for bullying and harassing people. And now he's facing 11 federal charges because he bullied police officers, politicians, he, he's facing like 20 years in jail because of wow. all the things he's done. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to focus on that ne negative part of what he did to me and so many others because everybody knows he's a liar and he just bullies people for fun. So let's talk about the achievements. So when you see your journey, can you walk me into the some of the achievements that you feel like, wow, this one, we marched, we did it, we had it. Uh, can you walk me through that? My biggest achievement for me is just you know not letting other people silence me and to use my voice to make a difference because there were moments where i just wanted to like not not even use my voice anymore so my biggest achievement is being able to go out here every day using my voice to make a difference 
Um, the other achievement is graduating with a master's degree in public policy so I can farther my work and mm -hmm. learn and expand my knowledge to help more people. Um, another achievement I would say would be like housing 25 individuals and families this winter so they don't end up dead on the streets. Many of them had babies. One of them had a newborn baby. And mm -hmm. my my other biggest achievement was giving out more than 1,500 coats the past two winters. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. You, you mentioned something about housing. Let's have a brief focus on that. So how do you see the housing versus immigrants trend in Maine? How do you see it as an activist? So housing is one of the biggest challenge when it comes to helping immigrants and asylum seekers and even refugees. Um, most of these families rely on, I would say 99% of them rely on general assistance. So you have to have a find an apartment or a house that takes general assistance that is within the income um, requirement. So, and many of these homes, especially in Portland, you're not going to find anything that general assistant can pay for that is within the income el eligibility. So, um, yeah, housing is the biggest challenge. But there were people that stepped up to help. There's one, this one landlord that literally allowed me to use his whole um, apartment complex to house all those families and individuals this winter. I, I can give you his number. You can talk to him if you want. Mm, yeah, but of course. If it, was, if it was not for him, I don't know where I would have put those families. Mm. So how did you connect with him? And I made a post on the Portland group page on social media. Mm -hmm. And then um, he kind of messaged me. I was already friends with him. And he kind of messaged me and he was like, hey, I want to help out. Um, I have this whole apartment open for the summer because I do Airbnb. I mean, winter because I do Airbnb in the summer. And he just let me rent it out. And we went through the process of going through general assistant. Some of the families, we reached out to the community to pay for their um, deposit. So mm. it was it was not easy, but we made it happen. Mm. Wow. So you you mentioned this housing moms with babies, uh, and that is an, also a trend of homelessness. How do you perceive that when you walk around the community, especially when it comes to immigrants? How do you see it? I mean, it's heartbreaking to see um, people out on the streets with babies, you know? Um like there were times where I literally cried because I'm like, I cannot, like, I don't know what to do. I can't leave this baby outside. Um, so there, it's not easy. It's very hard to deal with. Um, but n right now there's more um, young men who are on the streets than families. There are young men who have so much potential, who want to work, who want to live the American dream, but they don't have housing. Most of them sleep in the cars outside of the uh, family shelter. Most of them sleep at friends' house. Most of them sleep at the shelter. The housing mm. is like one of the biggest challenges. This is like maybe the one year anniversary of me trying to find housing for like so many young men because it's harder to find one apart one. Um, bedroom apartment whereas if it's family like people are more accepting and, and then when you see around the town when you understand the people's uh requests and what they are saying so housing is a general issue for everyone either native americans or you yeah. citizens, whoever you are uh, and in another morning you find like a uh, 500 people arriving in the town <laughs> and you yeah. are a social, a social activist, a social justice activist. Don't, don't you sometimes sit down and maybe I'm fighting a nonsense fight sometimes because of the, the resources versus the arrivals and you feel like this is nonsense. How do you bring pieces of the puzzle together again to start again? Actually, the staffs at the shelter, because I bother them a lot, 
you're always telling me, you know, Hamdi, this problem is not going to end anytime soon. You need to just relax. Because every Ooh. time I see a family, I just go to them and be like, hey, y'all have space. And then there's like five families that arrive the next day. And it's just like a non-ending cycle. But it's it's more, there's more that the city and the government should be doing than the shelters because there's only limited space that they have to house people. So this is a bigger issue. Um, there are homeless men and women who have been on the streets for 10, 12 years, even 20 years here in Portland. Um, and they were born here, they were raised here. So people that are unsheltered, it's it's not anything new to see people that are unsheltered. Mm. But it's it's a bigger problem that the government needs to resolve. Mm. We need more housing. We need um, more resources. We need more shelters. Um, we need the rates of how um, like rent to be in decreased because it's very expensive here in Portland. So it's a um, bigger complex issue. It it is, and you have seen how the community has shipped in their part and yeah. uh, when you think about it and you uh, how do you build that uh, angle as well like uh, community relations uh, getting the community to know the issue and to help out how do you have any uh, way to connect with the community on that as well well i think 99 percent of the people in this community know that housing it's very challenging for people to find housing right now. Um, there are rich people who are building expensive apartment complex, people that are moving from different states, you know, to buy house. So the minimum wage is not even that great. So people know that there's in housing issues. There are organizations that are working on that. But every time, like, I just use my social media to bring awareness mm. but I mainly focus on how can we get resources that's it how can we help this family tonight how can we help this individual that's all I focus on because mm. there are people that are working on the bigger issues and I wonder how you would advise the community to come as uh, to come on board especially the immigrant communities the young ones who whose voices rock you know so how do you want them to join the social activism movements um can you advise i want young people who are immigrants to know that they have a voice in whatever they want to fight for there are organizations and people that will that will rally behind them so they never have to feel like they are alone in whatever fight they want to be in um whether it's housing, racial justice, you know, all that stuff. Like, there are so many people who, are, who will rally behind them. And I encourage them to get involved in their community and to help resolve complex issues because it also impacts them. The subject that you want to <clears throat> speak that I have not covered that you want to add to? Um, come, I just want people to know that there's community out here and that this work is I'm not doing it alone. There's literally people who are rallying behind me that make this work possible and mm -hmm. that have made it possible for us to pay for the um, deposit of families who found a house, um, mm -hmm. who made it possible for us to put families in hotels, who made it possible for us to feed babies, close babies. Um, mm -hmm. It was Coffee by Design um, who literally helped me um, do a coat drive at their mm -hmm. location in um on Diamond Street. You know, mm -hmm. it's there are people who are who are behind me, and I appreciate mm -hmm. so much. If people want to reach out to support, uh, what is your platform exact platform they can reach out to you? Project, yeah, Project Relief, Project Relief, a racial justice and mutual aid group. Um, where there's so many, we have volunteers on and off, like just doing different things. My family, my aunts, like just 
my friends, you know, everybody just volunteers whatever they can. It's not really an official organization, but it's just a way to like, you know, get quick support for people. Uh, but my, my biggest um, platform is Hamdia Ahmed. Jaha Kuzimana, your host. We are at the end of today's show. Remember the website, amjambaafrica.com, has a variety of great news, and you can pick up Amjamb African newspaper at stands like Hannaford, Burundi Cafe, the markets on Risbon Street in Lewiston, Coffee by Design, and many more places. Together with the entire team of Amjamba Africa, we thank you. Bye.